The last perspective that we're going to look at is called the humanistic perspective. And the humanistic perspective is another one that is somewhat abstract. It's very individualized. It's very personal to each individual. It's called humanistic because they believe that our behavior and mental processes are determined by our need to fulfill our human potential. That we all have the potential to be a perfect human being, whatever that means to the individual, but we all have that ability within us. And the choices that we make are either helping us to achieve that full potential or hindering us from achieving that full potential. If you've heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, then you know exactly what I'm talking about with this humanistic perspective, because Maslow is the founder of the humanistic movement. And he coined a term called self-actualization, which is that peak of human experience. It's, the, it's that becoming the best human being that I can possibly become. I have to move up through a number of, of different levels to reach that self-actualization stage, but I can achieve it. Not all people do, but those who do, they know that they are living at their highest potential. The humanistic perspective also emphasizes personal growth. That again, the decisions we're making, the things that we do, are an attempt, hopefully, to grow as an individual. And then our self-concept is the way that we see ourselves congruent or does it line up with what is real? The way I see myself, is it the same as what everyone else sees? Is it the same as what really is? Okay, think about a person who's depressed and who thinks that he's worthless, thinks that he shouldn't live anymore, thinks that he causes all the problems in his family or whatever like that. That is his self-concept, but it's not reality because we know that that's not true of any person. So that would be uh, called an incongruent self-concept. And obviously, if we have an incongruent self-concept, we're not going to live up to our full potential. We've got to have a congruent self-concept. So let's look at the little boy. Why is he using the force around the house? Last time, stop the video and jot down a couple answers. Okay, let's look at what the humanist would say. They would say that he's doing this because he has a need to fulfill his potential. And if he's Darth Vader, okay, he needs to fulfill his potential and he needs to use the force. And so he's going to go around, he's going to practice as much as he can so he can perfect that and become the best person that he can be. And his self-concept, he believes that he can use the force. Is that congruent or not? It depends on whether we're using our imaginations or not. The little kid probably believes he can do it, okay? Probably believes that the force is real and it can be attained, and therefore he's having a congruent self-concept, especially when the at the end he gets the car to start. But we know in reality that you know the force doesn't necessarily exist and, and that kind of a thing so he'd have more of an incongruent self-concept so those are the five perspectives the biological the cognitive the behavioral the psychodynamic and the humanistic perspectives